What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am going to be walking through how to draw some flowers and how to think about flowers when you're drawing them. So something I struggled with for a long time, maybe you can relate, is drawing flowers that are dimensional, drawing things in general that have dimension. This is going to be some of the ways that I draw the base of my flowers, how I sketch beforehand, and also just something to kind of be an exercise to help you. It's not super sexy, but it is one of those fundamental things that might be able to help you. So if you know me, I'm all about using the tools and technology that we have to make the drawing process not only easier, but also more fun because the more that you like what you draw, the more you're going to do it, the better you get. All of those things are really good things. The brushes that I'm using today are free. I recently revamped my website and it's easy to access all the stuff. You can get these brushes right away along with tons of other freebies. So let's get into the tutorial. So flowers can pretty reliably be drawn from circles and ellipses as references, at least as a starting point. Demonstrating how you can start to think about using a circle as a reference, we can presume that we're looking at this circle as a flower from a top-down perspective. So then if a circle is a top-down flower, an ellipse would be a flower viewed more from a side angle. What we're going to do is turn these basic shapes into actual functional guides for drawing flowers. First, we start by deciding the center point. In my drawing leaves video, which you should check out if you haven't yet, I mentioned the decisions that you make when drawing. We need to make a decision about how this flower is formed and what perspective we're looking at it from. We're doing that by adding the center, whether in the form of a circle or a dot. So here I'm doing a circle. By overlapping the center circle here, I've clarified some additional things about this flower, that it is more shallow, maybe with the depth of a daisy versus that of the depth of a rose. I can even further define this by connecting the edges of the center circle with the larger ellipse, which then creates a cone shape. Now this serves as a functional reference. I can erase here and I have guidance on how to draw the petals all the way around here. So here's another example. This is a wider ellipse. And if I place the center point of this more towards the, the actual center of the ellipse, the perspective of the flower changes and we're looking at it suddenly more from the top right rather than from the side. So this still gives me guidance on how to draw the petals. I can even add these contour lines to kind of help clarify how the petals should be drawn. You can also use this method with multiple ellipses to create a more complete wireframe, so to speak. So if I draw these three layered ellipses and then connect the sides, it starts to create a more enclosed, more spherical shape, something that you might use to form a peony. Once you have these reference shapes, drawing the petals is the next step. So these examples that I have here on this page are just a few ways that you can draw petals. I put this together to help illustrate the different ways of forming petals as they go around the entire flower. This first one here is a completely unfurled petal and it's a basic teardrop shape. Depending on the type of flower, you might have it come to a point or have some more texture on the top edge like this one below. These unfurled petals represent the fullest length and width of the petal dimensions. So your unfurled petal that you draw, maybe at the back of a flower, at the back of your guide reference, that will always be longer and wider than the ones that are folded or foreshortened, like the other examples on this page. So if you're drawing a petal that is curling back onto itself, it's going to be shallower because some of the length is represented in this portion that is folded back on itself. Similarly, when drawing a petal that is more angled to the side, it's going to appear more narrow in width because the perspective has changed. One last note on drawing petals. When drawing a petal that's folded back or curled back on itself, it helps to think about the fold a bit like a fold of fabric. So I have this here to demonstrate. And if I fold over the edge, the folded edge isn't going to have texture. The texture is only on the actual edge. 
the folded edge is a cleaner line, so you wouldn't draw with zigs and zags. Another way that you can visualize things in three dimension is to use the warp function. So here I have a flat petal shape that I've drawn and I'm going to draw a selection around it. And then I'm going to utilize the warp function in Procreate to get a better feel for how the petal might look in different perspectives and positions. So you can even drag these little nodes around to fold the petal back on itself use it as a mesh layer, which is what it is, to change the form of what you've drawn. You can honestly even use the mesh tool to pull a circle shape into different forms and give it more dimension. So if I have this circle here and drag the center down, it gives me a guide that I could use to draw a flower viewed completely from the side at eye level. This might be kind of convoluted, it might not be your jam, but I wanted to share it because it can be helpful when thinking in terms of dimensional shapes. And it's a function within Procreate that you can just try and see if it works for you. Now to bring things full circle, see what I did there? <laughs> Here's what all of this new knowledge looks like when we put it into action. So I'm starting with an ellipse that I've drawn and I add this center point. And then I am connecting the center point to the ellipse to create this cone. And then I draw in some lines for guidance on drawing the petals. And here I have some arrows, I'm drawing some without arrows, it doesn't really matter. Then I'm lowering the opacity of this layer and moving onto a layer above, I can draw in my actual petal shapes. The brush that I'm using here is my Smooth Inker. Here I'm sticking pretty closely to my reference shape, drawing the petals according to the angle that you would view them from. So side ones are foreshortened and the back longer petals are totally unfurled. The petals here that are closer in the foreground, I'm actually adding these on a new layer so I can more easily erase the overlap of the lines that I've drawn. Here still, it helps to use the reference shape as a guide to know how shallow those petals will be. Once this rough sketch is done, I can go in and add any details that I want. I added some shading, but I didn't like it. So then I am switching gears and I'm using my Petal Painter watercolor brush to fill in some color and a little bit more depth. And now that I have my watercolor part done, I am hiding my original sketch layer and I'm going to redraw all of my line work still using my smooth inker brush for a cleaner overall look. And that's kind of the process that I would follow using all of these techniques. So like I mentioned at the beginning, the brushes that I am using are part of my resource library. I'm calling it the Pronto Pack. I've kind of created a lot of resources for Procreate over the years, and I have shared them in like seven different ways. So I finally collected everything together. So it's just like super straightforward. You can download them from the Dropbox directly onto your iPad. I'm excited about it. If you've already signed up for my newsletter, thank you so much. I think it's amazing that you wanna hang out and make art with me and I love that you're here for it. If you want to sign up, you can follow the link in the description and that is the end of my spiel. Um, if you made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe for more. I put out new videos every week. Thank you again. I'll see you in the next one.